cabinet should be equity in the world. <laughs> Man, it's hot in here. Now then, crew, and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. And I have got the gorgeous Tall Girl Holly. I know your name. <laughs> Day. I, was, I was just doing that little, that little pause to build up the tension. Mm. I've got the gorgeous Tall Girl Holly here in the workshop again. Man, you are looking really good at the moment. Well, uh, really, really good. That's my best line. I can't do any more than that. I'm, I'm not a good chat up kind of a guy, but did it work? I don't Thank know. You. Oh, cool. Hey, the pub later on. Right. This video, we used to use these at college, didn't we? These are a, I can't get it on the picture, but I'll step back. It's one of those things. And it uses compressed air from your air compressor to vacuum bleed the brakes on your vehicle. Really, really cool. This one sucks the fluid through. You can get other types that push the fluid through from the mass cylinder. And um, horses for courses, you know, both sort of work pretty well. I wanted one of these for many, many years. This is the, this is the first time I've actually owned one of these. I've used plenty in, in you know, workshops and at Unitech as well. We taught how to use these, which was great. But we found a problem, didn't we? We found a problem with them. And I'm going to tell you all about this problem. It doesn't stop them from being used, don't get me wrong. But let's get it set up on this bike. And this bike, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, is going to be Tall Girl Holly's new farm bike. Because it's about time you got given a gift, isn't it? <laughs> so Andy's set himself up yet again for more work. Not as if I haven't got enough, really. <sighs> to get this Honda DR200. No, sorry, Suzuki, dare I say Honda, Suzuki DR200S farm bike up and running for Tall Girl Holly so she can go and play in the woods. Yeah, have some fun. Probably won't film it because, you know, she's probably going to fall off loads and hurt herself and things. I can't afford the insurance. At least if it's not filmed, I, I, just, I can just deny it never it ever happened, can't it really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that works a lot better. Okay, but this video... It needs, it's been stood around for a while, it's a few years old, it ideally needs some new brake fluid flushing through on the front uh, hydraulic brake, it's got a disc brake on there with a caliper, so we can give this a test, see what happens, and I can also show you the potential problem that you get with these kind of bleeders. You ready? Yep. Cool, high five. Look at that, here we go. Right Ollie, up the steps, because I can't be asked to put the hoist down. <laughs> right, front brake, reservoir cap. Cool. Needs to come off. Now, often these screws are absolute bastards to get out on older bikes. They round. They must make them out of like play dough because they're really soft metal. Yeah, these ones look pretty clean. And to be fair, I did loosen them for you. You did. I did off camera, just because you know I, I didn't want to throw you in the deep end and. Have it all, like, you know, struggle. Now be careful, because there'll be fluid leaking out all the place. There's a rag there for you. Cool. All right. And what, what we'll do is we'll get set up. I'm going to keep topping that up, and you're going to use the tool. Okay. Right, Holly, next job, crack off and remove the bleed nipple. The reason we're going to remove it is it looks to me like it's full of crap in the end. So we're going to clean that out, okay? Do you want some gloves for this? Nah. You all good? Yep. Cool. All right, so you want to be going the other way. That's no, tightening. Okay. So start at the top and push it down. That's it, so lose your spanner, and then you want to come in from this side here, and there you go. See? Yay! I'll make you a damn good tool girl, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Excellent, okay. Now, ideally, we don't want to lose all the fluid in the system, so you just put your finger over that for a minute. Yep. And I'll take the bleed nipple, and I'm just going to clean that out. Right, so easiest way to clean these things out is with a drill bit, and hopefully I've got one small enough. Oh, I have, look at that. So in there, give it a little twizzle. Get all that crap out of there. Excellent. Right, so let's get some brake clean and we'll blast it out. Okay, hopefully it won't go on the camera. Are you ready? Here we go. Wait for it. Oh, 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 fantastic. Right, back to the bike. You're still here? That's yep. fantastic. Good job. 
Right, we'll pop that back in there then. Because you don't get a lot of fluid in these things. It's easy if you leave it dripping, it'll all just drain the whole thing out and it gets real hard to bleed up. So we'll just nip that off for now. We know it's it's you know it's clear now. And we're gonna get the tool set up. Cool. Yeah. Easy job really. Right, Holly. There you go, the new tool. That's the bit that goes on the bleed, you will need that. Cool. And I'll pass you through the airline. There you go, look. Got some. Oh, it's tough. It's a brand new one, brand new fitting. There's 130 psi sat down there. There we go. Right, we're in. Turn it on. There we go. So you twizzle the knob when you're ready. Yep. There. That's right. I'm going to clamber up the ladder and keep topping it up. And what I'll do is I'll move the camera so we can see exactly what's going on with the fluid that's coming out here. Right. I'm ready when you are. Go for it, Holly. Cool. Is that like height? Okay, so you can see bubbles continuously coming through, but this is not air that's trapped in the system. It looks like it is. What this is, is air that's been drawn down through the threads of the bleed nipple. So it's not good. If we do a manual bleed next, then I'll, well, actually we'll do that. So I'll, I'll turn this off. There we go. You see there's loads and loads of air bubbles still coming through on that pipe. You can see them going up the other side there, look. Heaps of air bubbles. Right, so we'll just lock that off for now. And we'll get rid of that. That's cool, I'll just unplug that now. That's cool. Stick that down there. That's what it's flying Right, we'll get rid of that. Right, Holly, if you go up, um, top it up again. And we'll do a manual bleed. Yep. Right, so we're going old school now. This is what I've used for years. A bit of old plastic pipe. I'm just going to move the camera around so we can see what's going on. Right, I'm good to go down here. How are you doing? Good. It's also a lot quieter doing a manual bleed, isn't it? Okay, so going by what we saw in the pipe on the auto bleeder, the vacuum bleeder, we had lots and lots of air coming through. If we do a manual bleed, we might get a little tiny bit and it should go absolutely clear with no air whatsoever. And then I'm going to explain to you why that is. Right, um, if you want to pull the brake in for us, Holly. Look at that. Hardly, well, actually bugger all air altogether. So, uh, out. Yep. In. In. Out. Out. In. In. Out. Perfect, that'll do me. Right. All right, Holly, final top off, and then we'll head back to the bench, I think. Hey, Holly, give us a smile. <laughs> awesome job, are we all good? Yep. Okay, you can put the top back on now if you want. Uh, you got the screws and everything, or are they all on the bench? On the bench. Oh, you should have worn gloves, girl, honestly. You'll have like, hands like mine one day if you don't wear gloves. Cool. Right, two screws, one screwdriver, all yours. Oh, it's 
so good about this wall in the way. It's like freedom. So what do you think to your new bike? Pretty cool. It's a bit rough around the edges. Yeah. But hey, if you drop it, it won't matter, will it? No. It'd be like just another little scrape to add to its character. Cool. Can't wait to get it fixed up. It's going to be awesome. awesome. Good job. Well done, Holly. So we could clearly see in the, the, uh, the tube, the clear tube for the vacuum bleeder, there was a constant stream of bubbles coming through. And that was after we put maybe three or four top-ups, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know, 75 millilitres or 100 millilitres of brake fluid through the system. There was no change. It just kept, you know, bubble after bubble after bubble all the time. And you'd be doing that all day long and it would just continue. And I found that that really, really used to confuse the students, didn't it? They think, yeah. oh, well, there's still air coming out, so we've got to keep bleeding it. And then we get bottle after bottle after bottle of brake fluid. Not good. As soon as we reverted back to the manual bleed system, where Holly, you know, I'd open the bleed nipple, Holly would pre pull the brake lever in, I'd lock it up, lock the nipple off. That sounded terrible, didn't it? I'd close the brake nipple on the caliper. Holly would then release the brake lever and we'd repeat the same process. Did that three or four times and we didn't get any air bubbles out at all. It was just an instant difference. Let me explain to you what's happening. Right, ignore the other drawing. That's from something else I was doing. What was it? Oh, that's when I made that trailer, trailer axle look. History now. Okay, so you've got the caliper body and we've got obviously some threads coming down that. Forgive the crappy drawing. And then inside here, obviously, we've got the bleed nipple. You know, where the pipe goes on. Pipe's on there. There goes the pipe. And, of course, the fluid and bubbles exit out the top. Now, what's happening, and we've got, obviously, the threads coming down here, and it's got a seat, which like a conical seat, which acts as a valve there is obviously a clearance between the threads on the bleed nipple and the threads cut into the, um, the caliper body and when this valve seat is off obviously the brake fluid can then you know can flow up through here from the caliper at the highest point and that fluid comes through so it comes through here look to the middle down the drilling and off it goes so the fluid's going up there, very happy, and out through the pipe, which is what it wants to do because of pressure differential. However, what also happens, and we've proved this, is air is being drawn in with the vacuum bleed, don't forget, because it's been this has been sucked out. The air is being sucked in and it runs down these threads and mixes in with the fluid and gets drawn out through the clear hose. And unfortunately, that leads the students or anybody that's using it to believe that there's still air in the system. If you weren't aware of this problem, you'd just be bleeding it all day long, wouldn't you? Gallons and gallons of brake fluid, <sighs> which is terrible. So what we did is, with the students is we, I think we put some grease in there, didn't we, to seal those threads up? I think one of the, one of the student groups, anyway, we put some grease actually in there between the, the uh, well, basically just put a big blob of grease on the threads of the bleed nipple, screwed it back in and we didn't have any air on the vacuum bleeder. The grease was enough to seal up that, that part of it. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That was a terrible drawing though. Jeez, I need a beer. So there you go. Real simple, crappy drawing, but hopefully it got the message across. If you're using one of those, oh, Holly, just passes the box over again. If you're using one of these vacuum type bleeders, ta-da, there you go. Then just be aware that this is a potential problem. Sure, you know, a bit of grease on the on the threads on the on the the, uh, the bleed nipple should help to eliminate that. But don't think that if there's air coming out of the uh, the clear pipe that that air is coming from the brake system itself because often it's not. It's coming down through those threads of the bleed nipple. And when when I was teaching the students, we'd use this tool to really flush out all the old brake fluid and get the new fluid into the system and to do the bulk of the bleeding, but we, we would always finish with a manual bleed, yeah. just, to be, just to be conclusive that there was no air left in the system. And that was the whole point. You can't be conclusive with this tool, hence the video. 
Okay, crew. Well, that was it. A really short video. I know you're all going to go, what the hell, Andy? Your videos are like an hour and a half long. This has been like five minutes. What's going on? Well, it's a short video. There you go. Those are the people out there that like the short videos will be going, yay, short video. Well done, Andy. And those that like the long videos will be going, oh, I want to watch some more. Well, there's plenty of other videos to watch. Okay, crew. Well, if you enjoyed the video, why not click on the subscribe button. You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on the gear icon, then tick the box and turn on notifications. And our friends at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. You will also find me on... Come over here, Holly. You seem so distant at the moment, girl. You'll also find me on... Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Patreon. You sure will. That's right. And feel free to communicate through any of those portals. Uh, with the Patreon page, you can read all about the history of the channel. Tool Girl Profiles. Jeez, there's so many Tool Girls on the channel. It's great. And you can download lots and lots of free pictures. I don't think even Holly's seen all the photos that I put up of her. No. Just you wait, girl, when you get on there. Like, Andy, take that one down immediately. Terrible. <laughs> oh, and you can also become a patron to the uh, to the channel through Patreon. Uh, and you can also donate through the PayPal icon on the homepage. Okay, crew. Well, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from the gorgeous... Cool girl, Holly. Sure is. See you around, chaps. And chapettes, don't forget. Over and out. Get the oh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>